Today I'm going to talk about the difference between NIC teaming as well as network load balancing and how you could use that in your network. I'm going to be using virtual machines, which means you can do this in the cloud or on premises. You could also use physical servers as well, but the only way I can demonstrate this is with virtual machines. So I'm going to start by going into the settings of my first virtual machine. I'm going to make sure that it has two network cards. So I'm going to go to where it says add hardware, choose network adapter, click add, and I'm going to add the second network adapter. We see adapter one is already there. I've got two network adapters on here, so I'm going to choose network adapter two and apply. I also want to make sure that the settings look the same and they do don't have any other customizations, so I'm good to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it up and I'm going to set up a NIC team. So a NIC team requires at least two NICs, as I mentioned earlier, and we do this in server manager on the server. Now I'm going to connect to it as if it's a local computer rather than as if it's a remote desktop, because I would lose communication if I went and set up a NIC team during a remote desktop session. So I'll just right click and choose connect. And my 2019 server is coming up. And now I'm logging into my server. For NIC teaming, it doesn't matter if you're doing this on a domain controller, an Active Directory domain, or just a regular member server, or a server that's in a work group. It'll work no matter what, as long as you have two uh, physical NICs or virtual NICs uh, as a, at a minimum. Now I've got to find an IP address that's not currently in use. I'm going to ping one which I believe is not, which I think is 207 is not in use. And besides just pinging it, because ping is disabled in the firewall by default, so even though it can receive a ping, the firewall is going to block it. So what we need to do is we need to also do an ARP space minus A command, and that'll tell us if it's communicating with the MAC address if the firewall is blocking it. Um, so obviously we see a lot of different uh, IP addresses here, so I'm going to redo that one with the pipe command more, so that way we see one page at a time. And 207 is not in use, so I can go ahead and use that. So now I'm in my server manager. Next thing I want to do is go to where I can set up one of these teams. I'm going to click on all servers, and we'll see any servers that I have in the list. And I'm going to find my file server one, which this server is running. I'm going to right click on it, and then we should see the option for NIC teaming. And there it is, configure NIC teaming. Now, if you don't have two NICs on there, then you may not see that option. So make sure you've got two. And again, this works in both a physical server as well as a virtual server. And in my case, I'm using Hyper-V. Next, what I want to do is I want to select both my network cards by holding down the Shift key and as many network cards as you'd like to add this to. It's up to you. I'm going to right click and choose to add to new team. Now, can you create a team with two different speeds? Yes, it is possible, but you will get unpredictable results. All right, so my team name is going to be Team 1. You can call this anything you want. I've selected both of my uh, Ethernet 10 gigabit adapters, which is because it's a high-end server. We have 10 gigabit adapters. So I can also click on additional properties. Now these additional properties, um, you don't really have to configure if you want to just go ahead and say this is fine the way it is. However, there are several options such as switch independent as, uh, on the teaming mode, load balancing mode, as well as standby adapter. So if you want, you can have all adapters active or you can choose one or the other. Uh, but this really makes more sense if you have three or more network adapters rather than just two. Now, in a physical server, you're going to see options to be able to change the teaming mode and the load balancing mode. So in a virtual server, you're only going to see uh, these options, switch independent and address hash. So if you are using a physical server, you may want to look up from Microsoft. Just go to technet.microsoft.com and find out what each of the different teaming modes and load balancing modes mean. But like I said, you don't have to use any of those. The defaults that show up are going to work just fine. So I'll click OK, and now it's creating the team. Now our NIC team is complete. We can see the team shows up over here. I can right click on it. I can choose properties and it just shows that both network adapters are there. Now, if I have more network adapters, if I want to remove a network adapter, all you got to do is check the box or uncheck the box, depending on what you have. So now what we have to do is we need to set up the IP address. So earlier we made sure that 207 was an IP address that was free. 
So now I have to assign it. And so far we haven't done that. So I'm going to go into control panel, just, just whatever the fastest way you can get to the network and sharing center. There's multiple ways to get there. I'm going to click on change adapter settings. And now I see this new team that's shown up. So we still see our two physical adapters, but what we want to do is we want to set up the team. So if I right click on one of the adapters, we'll see the option for TCP IP4 is gone. So you only are going to see it under the team now. So I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to go to IP version four, go to properties there. Now I can set that 207 address. And I could say we're going to go out 21.1 and 110 is our domain controller. So now I'll click OK, click close. And I'll just minimize those boxes. Now I'm going to bring up PowerShell. And PowerShell is going to tell us whether or not uh, we are going to get out to the Internet. Now, it doesn't matter if you do PowerShell or Command Prompt. It's just a little bit easier because that was in the list. So we're still getting out to the Internet, which is awesome. If I do an IP config slash all, we'll see that our IP address is 207. So everything is working as I'd hoped with the team. Now, once you have a team, if you want, you can delete that team simply by going back into Server Manager, right click, choose Configure NIC Teaming, and then you see your team. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that team. I'm going to choose Delete. And now the team is gone. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to go back into my Network and Sharing Center and make sure that everything is set back up. I'm going to refresh. Team is gone. Set back up on my Ethernet connection so I can get back in on what the old IP address was. So you see now TCP IP version 4 is lit up and my old IP address is still there. However, the gateway is gone. So I'm going to re need to re-enter that information and click OK and OK. And I no longer need Ethernet 2 because my team is now gone. So I'll just go ahead and delete that from the settings. Let's see what this looks like in a Visio diagram. So here we see file server one has a NIC team of 192.168.21.207 and everything worked just fine. It went out through the switch and, and out into the internet. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is going to be network load balancing. Network load balancing, as you can see in this graphic, works much different than other types of redundancy, such as NIC teaming. NIC teaming is just going to be redundant to the server itself, but when you use network load balancing, you're going to be load balancing between two different servers. So this allows us to have high availability for various different applications. So let's say that you're hosting a website and you want to put it on both servers and you want it to be redundant just in case one of the websites goes down or one of the servers goes down with the website on it. So you can have a load balanced IP. So either one of these servers and in this case, file server one and file server two is going to respond to this 208 address, which is great. So uh, that way we can have redundancy. Now, this is not the same as failover clustering. Now, failover clustering is different. I've got videos on this uh, that you'll take, take a look in my playlists on my channel, and I go over that in depth. What this is, is this is network load balancing, creating a network cluster. So a network cluster is different than a failover cluster because you're just clustering the network card and not the entire servers, not, the, not all the different nodes that are in your cluster. Now what I have is a file server 1, which is a .115, and file server 2, which is .114. We're going to be using 208 for our network load balanced address. I'm going to log into both servers, and we're going to add a new role. I'm logged into file server 1. I've got my add roles and features. And I should have said that I'm adding a new feature, not a new role, because they are slightly different. Roles generally affect everyone in the network and Active Directory, whereas features just tend to affect the computers themselves. So I'm going to keep going until I get to features, and I'm going to choose the network load balancing option on server one, as well as server two. So I'll click install, and we've completed the installation on file server one. I'll click close. 
and it's just about done on file server 2 as well. Now what we want to do is go into tools and we'll see network load balancing manager and we'll see that both in file server 1 and file server 2. Now you have to decide whether or not you're going to use unicast or multicast. So if you have more than one network card then you'll want to do unicast and if you only have one network card you want to do multicast otherwise you'll get errors when trying to add additional hosts. So let's go ahead and create the cluster and I'll show you what all that means. So I right click on network load balancing clusters, choose new cluster, and I'm gonna put in file server one and click connect. And we see two different network cards. So in my case, I'm gonna choose the 114 network card. The other one obviously is a, an automatic IP address, which is unusable. So we can see the dedicated IP address is uh, set to 114 and the unique identifier is set to one, that's perfect. We want it to start right away, which is also good. Click next. Now I want to put in a cluster IP address. So this is going to be an IP address that I know is not being used by anything else. There we go. Click OK and click Next. And we just see the confirmation. We could also put in an internet name and this will register that name into our DNS. So I'll type in NLB for network load balancing and it'll be appended to my active directory name .techpub.us. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I choose the correct option here. Unicast is generally one-to-one -one type communication. Multicast is uh, one-to-many. So the problem is, is that if you only have one network card on one or more of your, uh, your file servers, you've got to choose multicast. Otherwise, you won't be able to connect to your other servers. If you have multiple network cards, you can do unicast, and it'll choose the dedicated IP address, and those IP addresses will talk back and forth to each other. So if one or more of your servers has only a single NIC, and in my case, my uh, file server 2 only has one NIC, I have to choose multicast. Otherwise, choose unicast. Click Next. Uh, this is the part where you can block or allow ports. So it's sort of a mini firewall separate from your regular firewall. So it allows you to say TCP, UDP, or both, and what types of port uh, range you're going to allow or to not allow. I'm going to click Finish because I don't need to block anything. And we see that it's being all set up. And it's usually only takes a few minutes. So you want to make sure that it says that the cluster has started. And now it's been added. Now I want to right click on my IP address for my cluster and choose Add Host to Cluster. I'm going to type in File Server 2. Click Connect. And there's File Server 2. It's also going to show my identifier as two. So the first one is one, second one is two. If we hit the drop down, you can see a lot more identifiers. So you can add a lot more of the servers into your cluster if you want. And once again, default state is started. Click next. And I can edit ports once again if I want to. And I've clicked finish. So this usually takes anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute, and then it will show up as started. And you can see initial host state on the right hand side of file server once has started and converged means that it converged the IP address of the cluster to the local IP address. That's exactly what we want. And now we can see that our cluster has been created. If you'd like to delete a cluster, if you'd like to delete the cluster, say you no longer have use for it, then we can do that just by selecting the NLB at the top and choosing Delete Cluster. So I'll go ahead and choose Yes. And it'll go back to just using the original IP addresses of 114 and 115 that you see here once the cluster is gone. Now that IP address that's dedicated to the cluster, which is .208, is going to no longer be reachable. So the advantage of having the cluster is that you can reach more than one server at a time using the same name and IP address. But sometimes, uh, clusters no are no longer needed because you're replacing equipment, and so this is how you delete a cluster. And now the cluster is gone, and if you want, you can recreate it by right-clicking and choose New Cluster. So that's the difference between NIC teaming and clustering as far as network clustering goes, and why you'd use them, what's the different uh, purposes for them. NIC teaming is going to give you redundancy as far as the network interface cards for a single server, whereas network load balancing will load balance multiple servers for applications that need high availability.